Thank you for tuning in again. I want to share some more information with you. This has to do uh, pertaining to California, obviously, but it just applies to all states. And if you're dealing with child support or any traffic court or so on and so forth, make sure you do your homework and research. You know, now that um, the court has stopped taking me to court since 2000, and, well, for child support since 2012, that you know I can have more time to uh, research and then of course I have another case you know that's out there but I'm putting that on hold but I'm going to pursue that as soon as I um, hopefully accomplish um, this um, tyranny that they put this upon me um, you know I was just sitting here I was thinking to myself before I made this video that you know when my ex hired this attorney I was thinking to myself like maybe he had an affair with her because you know, it was so personal, and to my understanding, amongst the Nigerian community, you know, I've talked to some other people in the past, and they've specifically stated to me that, you know, she couldn't get nobody here in Sacramento. She brought one guy from Europe. That didn't ever last. And then, you know, of course, she met somebody. It was a hookup, basically, as I was informed, to a guy that was from Texas and brought him and his daughters here, you know, to start a life, whatever. And then, basically, you know, he's a... A pastor and they had a church together um, here in Rancho Cordova and of course you know I had that on my other hard drive I'm gonna hopefully get that taken care of so I can post that too because you know he bears a different last name you know his name is Sam, Pastor Samuel uh, Brown Dawson and she goes by Bumi Owani and she was considered like the first lady of their church so that's another issue I'm going to bring up in my other next video because she never disclosed that they had monies coming in even if it's donations whatever it is um, to the church that they were overseeing in Rancho Cordova but like I was saying before you know this is like I was thinking here I'm like huh maybe she wanted him or he's nothing anyway but you know my ex or possibly because her husband now is from Sierra Leone you know she liked this other Nigerian guy he didn't give her a time of day because she has an attitude problem she's very um, vicious she's very hard-hearted and I I believe has to do with her past in Europe you know um, so that's another story but anyways I want to bring this to your attention um, if you're challenging your child support the first things first when you're going to your child support you know of course like like when I started mine, I didn't know the difference because, you know, in the beginning I was working. I didn't have time to do all that. And then later on, during the tyranny, when I was going through, you know, I knew my case was wrong, but I didn't have the tools or just, you know, well, I did have the tools per se, you know, limited tools, but I was so distraught. I just, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't wrap my head around it at all. So, and in the trains I did have, they sold me on the bus, took my money, you know, like I mentioned to you guys before. But um, I want to to ensure you that make sure that you research your your the the allegedly um, judge with not judges they're commissioners they're attor excuse me attorneys on the bench and you know and you make sure you ask for their jurisdiction and you and you have the right to um, not to be heard before a commissioner and um, if you look at my other videos I have everything that's there for you to do your research on that and um, you have that right and it has to be under stipulation to be heard before a court commissioner because like I said they are nothing more than attorneys they're not judges they have been sworn in they haven't taken their oath and bond there has to be a bond you know um, in order to serve the public so um, it's very important don't be intimidated by the black robe that's just a um, it's an administrative proceeding to give the illusion to the public that you're in a real court, you know, and it's, it's all administrative, it's ministerial, um, and they can be held liable for that as well. And then another thing, make sure that, um, that you make sure there's no conflict of interest. If you have an attorney that's in front of you, you have an attorney, or maybe your ex has an attorney, it just depends. You know, they always send these signs and symbols from the bench, and I noticed that for all the, over the years, which I never understood. I thought maybe he was scratching his head, putting it like he couldn't hear anything. So those were symbol, symbolism, especially if they belong to the same particular group or club. Um, you know, I don't want to go into more into that, but you will notice at times that they do give some signals from the bench, either eye blink, they turn their head, shoulder, um, put their hand to the paper. These are all symbols to the attorney that they're going to basically throw you under the bus, you know, or if it's going in their favor. So make sure that you, find, you do your research before you get into court 
that even if they say it was an emergency, nothing is an emergency, you know, you say, you know, you want to continue the case to seek legal counsel or to better research your case. You know, you have that right to do that, and they, and they have to um, give you that time to do your research or to seek counsel. And the thing is, um, I mean, even if you want to get a counsel or an attorney or whatever, they're, gonna, they're not going to do nothing for you because they work for the courts. But you want to do your research to find out if the opposing party has an attorney, if they worked for that particular court, if they worked in the settlement conference, or they approached him judge, or they have uh, colleagues from one another, um, do, do they have a law practice together, do they participate in the same organization. You have to do your research to find that because then you can file conflict of interest, and then you can put your exhibits together. And a nine times out of ten, when you mention that, and you stay for the record, even though there's, there may not be a court reporter, it is audio recorded anyway. And then um, you stay for the record about the conflict of interest and make sure you have your ducks in a row. So anyway, enough of me talking about this, but I wanted to show you some examples, like especially for here for Sacramento. We have a, a Title IV-D commissioner. He's an attorney um, that's on the bench, Department 127, which is allocated for Title IV-D funding. And this is a, um, a thing here I found online. It was through LA Courts. You can see here. You can find that yourself, but um, I can put this also in my description box. And it goes on here about the scope and rules of temporary uh, judges appointed by the trial courts, where trial courts mean superior court, the lower court tribunals. And um, I just wanted to skip around like I said, I'm going to put this in my description box so you can look it up yourself. But it says, appointment of attorneys as temporary judges. Trial courts may appoint an attorney as temporary judge only if the attorney has satisfied the requirements of Rule 2.812. And let's see if that's on there. Okay, it's probably down further. So 2.812 states, requirements for court appointment of an attorney to serve as a temporary judge means um, the experience required for appointment and service, a presiding judge may not appoint an attorney to serve as temporary judge unless the attorney has been admitted to practice as a member of the bar, State Bar of California for at least 10 years before the appointment. However, for good cause, a presiding judge may permit an attorney who has been admitted to practice for at least five years to serve as a temporary judge. And B, conditions for appointment by the court the presiding judge may appoint an, an attorney to serve as a temporary judge only if the attorney, one, is a member of in good standing of the state bar and has no disciplinary action pending, two, has not pled guilty or no contest to a felony or has not been convicted of a felony that has, that has not been reversed. We have a couple of judges who, who have been convicted of fel, fel, felony and um, or misdemeanor, and what they do is they'll seal that for them anyway. That's, that's what they do in these courts. But now that I got, get, got your attention on this, like I guess I'll put this in my description box for you to review. I'm going to show you our Title IV D uh, uh, commissioner who sits on the bench in Department 127, and we have another um, department. I think it's 128, if not, and he is a temporary judge as well. But I want to show you the difference, and um, I can't answer any questions. But I want you to do your research in regards to this. So let's go to um, this is Cal Bar. It used to be. Um, I think it was bar.ca.gov, but they changed the website. So it's calbar.ca.gov. And I went to search for attorney, so I want to go here. Let's see. Oh, let me see. Oh, we'll go down here. Look up a lawyer. They're not considered lawyers. They're called attorneys anyway. So I want to type in, I know the, the person, it's Harmon. And he's, a, he's our child, Title IV D. He's just the one who really... Um, really screwed my case up. The, the the Department of Child Support Services filed over 15 motions to modify. He refused, and he used my ex's kids plus my kids divided by one third. And the, the at that time, the child support attorney was like, "You can't do that." He says, "Watch, watch and see." Whatever he said, and so he did it too. You know, his and he he's such he was angry because I filed that appeal, but you know it didn't go nowhere because you know they get on the phone, they talk to their you know. Their, their, the cohorts and say, hey, man, she's coming up there, filing appeal, dismiss it, you know? So anyways, um, <clears throat> his name is Scott, so we can scroll down, or if you know the first name, you go straight ahead, and it's Scott P. Harmon, so um, it's Scott, Harmon Scott Park, he's active, it's his bar number, he's from Sacramento, he's been practicing law, I guess he passed the bar in 1975, and um, so you go here, it says, see, it says Sacramento Superior Court, 3341 Power Inn Road. Uh, uh, 
of uh, uh, Suite 127, which is the courtroom 127, which is Title 4D. This is the phone number, this is the facts, and um, this shows the history of him he's being active. Now, I want to show you um, what it looks like if one was appointed to the bench as a judge. So, let's go to this person here, Awani. This is the one that I was telling you about that got appointed to the bench. So, if you click on her case, it says judge. So, it doesn't say she's an attorney anymore. It's her bar number. You can click on it so nothing comes up because it says that um, see Constitution of California, Article 6, Section 9, basically regards to judges and their bar membership. You can look that up. So then we want to go to the other. Uh, um, he's at a Title 4D, but this is like a regular child support for those who are working. Or he does contempt proceedings. He does, you know, just, mini just other minimal, minimal stuff. So his name is, uh, let's see, Hawking Dolan. I can't spell his name. His first name is Danny. You know, for me, he did a pretty, I think he was okay, you know, for my kid. I think he felt sorry for me, but he didn't really say. You know, he knew they were screwing me around. But you see his bar status is inactive. He's not appointed judge. So what does that mean? So he works in Department 132, but he's been shuffled around. Let's look it up, 128. And so this is child support right here. So his bar um, card is inactive, and it's been inactive since 2009. So what does that mean? I don't know. Don't, don't ask me because I can't tell you. You need to do your research and, and your homework. Maybe he didn't renew his bar license, but he cannot practice law, but he's on the bench. Am acting as a temporary judge or commissioner, so appointed to the bench, based basically by the court, and they're funding. Um, I know for, um, excuse me, for Harmon, his um, his his um, he's not part of the court's function, so his um, payments or his um, his pension is paid through and by the Title IV reimbursement. So the more people on child support through the welfare program, basically, um, it goes, this is, senses his income. So anyways, I hope this information was helpful for you and to better assist you in your further researching. Um, like I said, you know, this does apply to California, but if you're in other states, it's the same thing. You know, they call them associate judges, which are attorneys. They call them magistrates, you know. So, you know, make sure you do not get caught up in the matrix, because I did, and it's taken me all these years. And meanwhile, everybody else, you know, these, these thugs, you know, their children are going to college and they're, you know, um, you know, making their income. Meanwhile, our children are being destroyed emotionally, psychologically, and, and everything that goes after that. So until next time, you guys, stay strong, be encouraged, and stay informed.